Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. And today we're gonna be doing a review of the Ishin Wizard uh, X220HV, I believe they're calling it. And now this is sort of the typical Banggood Ishin Wizard that you expect, except this one runs on 6S, therefore the HV. So let's just do a quick rundown of the components before we get into the meat of the review. So the frame is actually, I believe this is a new frame they built. It's actually not too bad looking at it. Um, lots of room in there. They, they use all the room, but it is a decently roomy frame. Not too bad on its own. It is nice that they give you little, little uh, foam, foam landing pads there. Come to the props. These are actually, these aren't the exact props they include. They include uh, Dow Cyclone T5046C, which these props are. I just put on some black ones because I didn't want to open the purple that they give you. The motors, these are definitely the nicest part of this quad. These are 2306 1650 kV motors. Um, you can see they do have purple wires there. Definitely very nice motors. They have Almost exact same construction as RCN power motors. Um, they have a little lip on the bottom. They have curved magnets, nice tight windings, a single piece bell. It is not a double piece. It is one single piece of aluminum and a uh, hollow steel shaft there. Very nice motors, only like 15 or $16. Definitely really good choice for them. Up front, we have something that's also very surprising. This is a Foxier Aero uh, Mini Pro. It's a very good camera for the price and it's a good inclusion on a quad like this. Um, decent quality and not one of the terrible cameras that they usually give you. Um, the GoPro mount here is actually a little molded thing. This is not 3D printed. Um, I really appreciate that it's molded. However, you still have to zip tie it along the front here. I wish they would just adjust the mold so it could, you know, screw down. Um, but I guess they just wanted it to be super generic. Um, I do appreciate how easy it is to slide the GoPro in and out, but it's still secure. That's very nice. You don't have to really... For Some mounts are so hard to get out if they're like front-loaded. Um, these side-loaded ones are pretty good. It comes receiver ready. I'm um, actually put a little XSR on there. It does not, the flight controller in here does not have any spare UARTs. So you're pretty much stuck to using an S bus or I bus receiver. You cannot use something like a crossfire unless you detach something else that's using a UART, which is possible. Um, they do a 4 in 1 ESC in the middle and then just, just generic flight controller made for that. Um, and for wiring up the receiver, it's literally just voltage ground signal and that's it. I just stuck it right here and I put the antennas out the back. They give you a fake little TBS Triumph. Unfortunately, you know, it is a clone, a direct clone of the antenna, but you know, it'll probably work okay. But in the back is a little bit interesting. They actually give you, um, they have a VTX that stacks up here and then they have a little board that is a little Bluetooth um, signal to your phone. And then as well as there is a little beeper down here. So if you plug it in, um, I, I hate beepers to begin with. Um, they're just so loud and so annoying. I will never use one on my build. Um, but hopefully you can see this guy down here. This is actually a little one cell battery. You can see it in the bottom here. Um, and that is after you unplug your battery every time, no matter if you crash or if you just land and unplug it, um, this will start flashing. And after about, I think a minute or two, it'll start beeping like crazy. And the only way to shut it off is to click this little button. So if you have this, click that every time you're done. So let's just go ahead and weigh this to see how much it uh, weighs. It's, it's definitely pretty heavy overall. Um, 434 grams. Wow, that's probably almost 100 grams lighter than my best freestyle build. This is about 360, so it's about 80 grams lighter there. So it's definitely a chunky, chunky quad. So I don't have too much flight footage and you're going to see why um, in a minute, but let me first just roll what I have and then we'll come right back. Alright, so here we have the Wizard HV outside, completely stock, have not changed anything, except for I put it on Race Band 4 on 200 milliwatts because that's my preferred channel. However, as you can see looking at the DVR, there is really no OSD on here, uh, no pilot name, no battery voltage, that's, you know, not just the camera voltage. so. You know, a couple of bad things, and this is completely stock except for I did increase the motor idle to 3% because 2.5 is too low. I don't know what they're thinking. And they also had air mode off. I don't know what they're thinking with that either. A couple basic settings that uh, they got pretty wrong. So let's see how it flies. Huh. Right off the bat, a lot of video noise and some really weird oscillation. 
Hopefully you can see and hear that there. Death roll. Even though, you know, I changed the settings to make it not do that. Love this squad. See after that crash. Alright, so here we are back after that and hopefully you can tell my pain. Uh, the quad definitely, you know, it looks good. I, I really wanted it to succeed. I really wanted to recommend this guy, but I did the fixes. I changed the motor timing. I changed the DMAG compensation. I increased the low, um, the minimum RPM, and it's still, you know, first flight. I only got like 15 seconds of flight on this thing because I go up and it just starts death rolling. So, and I've heard that's a lot of problem with these quads, this model specifically, even although the things I did were supposed to fix it, obviously didn't. Um, and another big issue was the camera, the uh, video had so much noise in it. And I've heard that's also an issue with other people. They just kind of, you know, glance over it. Um, but unfortunately, I wasn't really able to fly this guy, and I'm not able to recommend it. Um, and I know mine probably is a bad one. I mean, it's a common issue, but it's a common fixable issue. Um, so even, but unfortunately, mine doesn't seem fixable. And I'm sure if you're an actual customer and you wanted to, you could definitely email them and they would get you a replacement because this one's clearly faulty. <clears throat> but unfortunately, I don't have any more footage to show you, so I'm actually going to leave a link down below to Kebab FEB's review of this. He did a quite nice video on this, <clears throat> showing what it's capable of. He opened up the top plate, um, looked at electronics a little bit more. Um, but it is definitely, you know, if it worked, I've seen some very nice footage come out of this guy. And for about, I think it's $220 um, completely pre-built like this. It's definitely not a bad quad, and the motors are definitely the nicest part. And another big thing about this one is every single part, the frame, the ESC, flight controller, motors, it's all completely available separately on Banggood. So if you do break apart um, and you're a beginner, you can still replace it, and it'll be good because pretty much everything is plug and play or very minimal soldering. So yeah, I guess that's pretty much going to bring us to the end of the video. There's not much else I can do, you know, if mine's not going to fly. Um, so once again, I'll leave a link down below so you can see some actual flight footage of it flying. But still, I, I would shy away from um, these pre-builds. I think it's a lot more beneficial. If you learn to fly on a simulator, um, there is line of sight and FPV simulators um, for free on computers. Um, like FPV Freerider has a free demo that I used to play. Um, and then I recommend getting like a Tiny Whoop if you are a complete beginner. Um, something a small brush quad with not a lot of power just to help you learn orientation if you're going to be flying line of sight as well as getting the feel of FPV down in real life. And then I recommend stepping it up and building your own quad right off the bat. Um, nowadays with 4 one ESCs um, and there's guides everywhere it's really not that difficult. And stuff like this while it's not a bad idea if you just do build it when it breaks you're not going to have the best idea however this one's simple it's pretty much all plug and play but it's still a good idea you're going to learn a lot and you're going to thank yourself later if you build your own especially once you start um, getting better at building and flying and you build a quad you know like this that's really high performance um, you're definitely going to appreciate it and be glad that you just didn't buy the cheapest ready to fly you could find and there are some pretty cheap high expensive high quality components for example if you wanted to build you could get this frame and you could get these motors i just wouldn't recommend uh, all this crap in the back you don't really need that um, and i wouldn't recommend the flight controller esc combo because something about them together uh, is obviously causing these issues but the motors and frame if, if you wanted and the camera that'd be a good place to start with your own build and they're all cheap components so that's an idea so yep, there'll be links down in the description below if you do want to check this guy out as well as uh, kebab's review so that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.